Singapore is making moves to deepen its geospatial capabilities and put its use on the map. New engagement plans have been announced at the Singapore Geospatial Festival 2023. Our efforts include an upcoming challenge that will see organizations and professionals harnessing AI to enhance the country's data-driven national map known as OneMap. The Singapore Land Authority, otherwise known as SLA, has also signed an agreement with NUS to develop and promote new geospatial courses for adult learners and mid-career workers. Mm, that's right. Now, uh, to tell us more, we have uh, two people in the studio tonight to further map out these plans. Sin Lai Chong is Assistant Chief Executive of Geospatial and Engagement at the Singapore Land Authority, while Professor David Taylor is Head of the Department of Geography at the NUS College of Humanities and Science. Welcome, gentlemen. First to you, Professor Taylor, uh, for the benefit of our audience out there and for us in the studio as well. Please do explain as simply as you possibly can the term geospatial. Is it essentially location data and more? Well, it is essentially uh, location data. So um, data that has a what we would call in geography a georeference. Mm -hmm. So it can be located somewhere in space. Uh, but it's also more than simply locational data because it's also the technologies mm -hmm. that we have to visualize those data, but also to analyze and evaluate uh, those data. So it goes beyond simply, say, mapping uh, spatial data uh, into analyzing data and looking for trends and establishing um, projections for the future and the mm. like. Type of customized mapping right, yeah. of, of all of that data. Uh, Mr. Sint, let's bring you in on the conversation here because what we want to do is mainstream the use of geospatial data and its capabilities at SLA. How prevalent, though, is the use of it already? Aren't we already using this a lot anyway? And why does SLA want to further it? Well, let me start by saying that uh, this morning we launched the fifth edition of the Singapore Geospatial Festival. And the main theme this year is uh, enriching minds and empowering lives. And so the theme is really to uh, mainstream geospatial. What I mean by that is that uh, we don't want geospatial data and technologies to be only used by the experts and the scientists. We want it to be used mainstream. That means uh, to be used by everyday laymen to solve the problems that we, we face every day. Yeah. Okay. And, and, how, and, and how so though? I mean, like when you, when you say everyday problems, can you yeah. give me an example? You mentioned that uh, actually geospatial information is already used quite mm. prevalently. It's true. Uh, when you move from place to place, when you drive, you do use GPS. Mm. Uh, when you want to look for restaurants and so on, yeah, you look at a map and you search for places. But we believe that there's a lot more to uh, uh, this geospatial than these areas. Uh, let me just give two examples. For example, in education, um, we are working very closely with MOE uh, to make the teaching of various subjects more interesting uh, using geospatial data and maps, not just in geography, uh, where it's been traditionally used, but also in other subjects like social studies uh, and also in history, uh, where we use story maps to tell stories about locations in Singapore, how they have uh, evolved over the years. Right. Mm, interesting. Um, uh, Professor Taylor, uh, we, we've got the technology clearly, but the fact is we lack the talent and the expertise to make the most of this technology. Um, and that is perhaps why you've got a new course going on that uh, is trying to plug the gap and maybe even create a new pipeline of talent. Mm. So I don't think we, it's not so much that we lack mm. the, the talent, there's a shortage uh, of talent. Um, but also because geospatial is such a rapidly changing field, uh, AI is used, uh, the cloud is, is used, these are all technologies which are changing very, very quickly. Mm. There's also a real need to keep pace with those changes, to anticipate those changes, and even to try and get ahead of those changes uh, as well. So the new courses that we're, we're putting on are not so much about trying to uh, um, address a lack of talent, it's to try and uh, address a shortage of talent, but also to make sure that we future-proof the talent that we have by providing them with the opportunities uh, to train to the highest mm. levels possible. Mm. Um, I think we also need to be aware, of course, that there is a big digital divide uh, and so there are still people who don't have access to uh, geospatial data and, and indeed other forms of, of, of digital mm. data so we're also trying to address that challenge as well. 
So the talent is there, it's just not enough of it. Exactly. Right yeah, now. Yeah. But Mr. Sin, let's talk about this upcoming one map challenge. Okay. Uh, you want to solve some issues at SLA with that challenge, right? You want to be able to address uh, some issues and, and you're hoping that AI is going to solve that. Uh, you're also partnering with external organizations uh, right. to do this, to sort of support the whole One Map Challenge. Why? Why do you need that participation? And tell me something about what you want to solve. Yeah. So basically, GPT today is used very widely uh, for people to find all kinds of information, even writing speeches and so on. Um, so we want to harness this uh, new technology uh, for one map to provide solutions, innovative solutions uh, that can basically produce a map-based information that is uh, versatile, that is personalized for our users. Um, we, we want to partner with uh, companies that are at the forefront of this AI technology uh, to come up with new ideas. Uh, some ideas that we have uh, tossed around uh, is like, uh, if you are interested in, for example, uh, artworks in Singapore, murals and art pieces in the public, and you want to know where they are, and you want to plan, let's say, a walking route, uh, half an hour uh, from where you are, okay, and you can ask, uh, presumably, uh, this map GPT, okay, I'm at this location, please plan for me this route to, to these places. And at the end of this half an hour, I would like to have, say, a meal at a Japanese restaurant. So <laughs> could you do a route for me, give me some options? And so hopefully we, we hope that uh, some companies will be able to come up with very innovative solutions, present this in 2D maps, 3D maps, uh, yeah, to wow our audiences and to wow our, our one, map, mm, one map users. Right. So, so you want to wow them. Uh, I, do you think you're going to be wowing them away from Google Maps and, you know, <laughs> the current favourites, which, you know, people are quite happy with uh, at this point. So how do you get Singaporeans to sort of migrate and use it on a day-to-day -day? Basis. Yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, commercial map uh, providers out there, including yeah. Google. So one map is different. Uh, we are the source of authoritative uh, government uh, data, and we provide information and uh, services that are uniquely Singaporean. So this, I think, just illustrate with a few examples. Uh, during COVID, it was on one map that you saw the locations of uh, where you could collect the ART test kits. Um, mm. Similarly, for dengue clusters, where are the hotspots? This information is on one map, but you won't be able to find it on commercial maps. Uh, maybe one more example is uh, drone flying areas. So our civil aviation authority is pretty strict on uh, where you can fly drones in Singapore. So this information of where you can fly the drones, again, is only available on one map. So mm -hmm. uniquely Singapore, government data. Yeah, I've seen people flying drones around Media Corp, actually. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if they're supposed to be there, just saying. Uh, Professor Taylor, this industry is, is changing all the time, and you were saying that it, it, it does change, and the impetus for people to enter this industry may also change. Uh, you were saying that the talent's there, not enough of it. How do you get more people interested in it? Is it suitable for one particular type of person, or uh, can a mid-career individual make the switch? I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, geospatially is, is pervasive now. It's in just about every profession already and looking into the future, uh, that trend of, of increasing penetration into professions is, is going to continue. Uh, so so I, it's also a question of can people afford not to be um, uh, familiar with geospatial technologies, able to use geospatial technologies. Uh, we hear a lot about AI, uh, but I would say that geospatial is at least equally as important as, as AI or will be uh, in the future. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's more a question of people really can't afford not to be uh, interested or um, aware of, of, of geospatial and oh. trained in, in, in its well, use. it's going mainstream any day now, uh, Mrs. That's Sin. Right. It's going to go mainstream and, and you're, you're going to help that happen. Thank you so much for the conversation and for explaining to us more about <laughs> what geospatial yes. mapping is and why we need it and why we should all be tech people, essentially. No <laughs> one's not a tech person. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we've been speaking there with uh, Sin Lai Chong from the Singapore Land Authority, SLA, and Professor David Taylor from NUS.